Welcome to this audiobook. If you bought it because you know who I am, welcome. If you bought it because you like the title, you have excellent taste. If you've been given it as a present, then please immediately thank whoever gave it to you because they have excellent taste. If you have no idea why you're listening to this, then you're an impulse buyer and you should embrace that side of your personality. I too have bought things on a whim. It's why I'm reading this while wearing a fully functioning Batman costume. Just in case you've purchased this because of mistaken identity, let me start by introducing myself properly. My name is Susan Kalman and at the time of writing this book, I'm 41 years old. I provide my age to you so you can place me in terms of your own history. If you're a youngster, you might think I'm far too old to understand young people things. Let me assure you, you're wrong. I'm absolutely down with youth activities like table tennis and gin. If you're older than me, then please be assured that I know a lot of people older than me and we get on fine. In fact, some would say I'm an old soul in a young body. I like darts, snooker and pubs with no music so you can have a decent conversation. I may in fact be a 60-year-old man from Yorkshire. It says writer on my passport, mainly because I figured comedian would cause problems when trying to gain entry to America. Saying that your job as a comedian is fraught with danger, especially when dealing with taxi drivers. The encounter usually goes one of two ways. Either they ask you to tell them a joke, in which case my whimsical feminist view on life fails to raise a laugh, or they tell you a joke, which can end badly for everyone. Before you get the wrong idea about me, let me be clear. I love taxi drivers. I really do. Especially when they utter my favourite passive-aggressive insult. Do you know who is funny? Kevin Bridges, Frankie Boyle, Billy Connolly, just repeat to fade. Honestly, the, the list is long. I'm a writer, as this book illustrates, but I suppose I'm probably better known as a comedian. If you're a Radio 4 fan, you'll have heard me on a multitude of shows like The News Quiz or I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. If you've only heard me on the wireless and don't know what I look like, then let me assist. Imagine Angelina Jolie stuffed into the body of Kylie Minogue with a Scottish accent. If you've seen me on television in shows like Have I Got News For You or QI, you'll know that I just lied a bit. I'll talk about my height more as this book progresses, but suffice to say I'm short. I'm so short I can't see over counters, reach the card payment machines and petrol stations, and if I buy three-quarter length trousers, they're still too long for my tiny little legs. I am Scottish from Glasgow, to be precise, and I'd be very grateful if you could put aside any preconceptions you might have of my hometown while you're listening to this book. The media are often delighted to present my fellow Glaswegians as violent, drunken, drug-addicted louts filled with a dislike for the English. None of those tropes apply to me, and I'd hate you to think that any of the stories contained in these pages are a result of my innate Scottishness. It doesn't help my happiness quota living in a country where summer lasts for a week, but it's not the sole cause of my bleak outlook on life. But let's get to the point of why we're all here. Me. And as we commence this thrill ride together, I think it's appropriate that I come out. Not, not about that, you know. If you haven't worked out by the fact I'm wearing a Batman outfit that I'm a lady gay, then I can't help you. And don't worry, much like the short issue, you'll hear more stories of the fact I'm a very good friend of Dorothy later on. Those are the kind of juicy anecdotes that will get this book discussed in the comments section of the Daily Mail. The coming out that I'm referring to is actually more difficult for me to admit than the fact that I'm gay, because the truth is that I have depression. In the past, I've been diagnosed as having clinical depression, but the medical diagnosis was, in a way, unnecessary. Some things, like a broken leg, are very obvious. You see, I'm not just a bit down sometimes, I'm depressed. I'm not like one of those little sad rabbits you sometimes see on a Hallmark card. I'm like a really upset Wookiee, full-on, world-hating, can't-stand-anything-or-anyone depression. For example, if I was to ask myself the standard happiness question, is this glass half full or half empty? I'd say, there is no glass. I don't deserve a glass. I'll drink out of this cup of broken dreams while looking at photos on Facebook of people I went to school with who have a better glass than me. I was once so depressed that I thought Bambi was a comedy. I've known myself to be so down that when I eventually smiled, I pulled a muscle in my eye. My depression was once so all-consuming that I couldn't even be bothered with personal grooming, like crimping my toe hair. And I usually like to make an effort when I wear sandals. But I'm not alone, of course. Statistics from the Mental Health Foundation put my case into context. One in four people will experience some kind of mental health problem 
in the course of a year. Mixed anxiety and depression is the most common mental disorder in Britain, and women are more likely to have been treated for a mental health problem than men. It's something that affects more people in the United Kingdom than many would like to admit. I've decided to come clean about my mental health because, to be honest, people still seem rather embarrassed to talk about it. I've made no secret of how I feel. I've performed stand-up shows about my depression and indeed wrote an episode of my Radio 4 series Susan Kalman is Convicted About It. I've become something of a poster girl for mental health now, which is a bit unexpected. I'd always hoped to become a poster girl of some sort, but thought it might have been because of my amazing muscles and my lovely hair. That's that mental comedian, people say, which is fine. It's just another label and society loves them. A journalist once asked me, is it difficult being a female Scottish lesbian comedian? I suggested it would have been more difficult being a male Scottish lesbian comedian. They've never asked me for an interview again. So many people got in touch with me after my show was broadcast on Radio 4 a couple of years ago that I thought I'd write more about the subject, partly because this is far cheaper than therapy and partly because I truly believe that until more people start being honest about how they feel, we will never get any better. And by we, I mean all of us, those of us who have depression, those who live with us, work with us, care for us, and even those who don't even believe that such a condition could exist. The problem is that depression is like all male comedy panel shows. No matter how much you want them to piss off, they're still there for everyone to see. It's a condition that doesn't necessarily disappear, but through the decades I've lived with it, I've developed coping mechanisms and strategies that mean I'm quite happy being unhappy and I've written them all down for you. Please be reassured as you read this, though, that I am absolutely fine now. You mustn't think that I wrote this while rocking back and forward in a darkened room covered in my own filth. I'm actually in an excellent place at the moment, and I have no doubt that I will continue to remain there. In fact, I'm so happy that I managed to write this book, and I, I certainly couldn't have done that in the past, raking over my fetid memories and opening my heart to thousands of strangers. I am well. I am in a good place and I haven't been forced to write this as some form of community service or court-ordered treatment. They say that everyone has a book inside them and this is mine, although I hope you buy the follow-up autobiography. I cheered right up when I got the part of Doctor Who. That's bound to happen in the next year or so. Fingers crossed. We hope you've enjoyed listening to Hodderpod. For more from Hodder and Stoughton's books and authors, find us on iTunes or visit www.soundcloud.com forward slash hodderbooks where you can listen and subscribe. Mm-hmm.